Hello, welcome back to Pediatric Survival Swim. My name is Allison Hogue. I'm a survival swimming instructor here in Riverview, Florida. And today I wanted to take a few minutes of your time to talk about layers of protection that we can use to instill water safety and drowning prevention measures within our family, our schools, our um, swim schools and just our life in general. Um, I think for me, I have 10 and everybody's different. Um, my top three are interchangeable or not interchangeable. The rest are um, my top three are really the meat and backbone of my layers. Um, and I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if your layers are different. Your layers of protection for water safety um, are different. If you have some more to add, if you think some are more important than others, um, and maybe with enough dialogue and conversation, maybe we'll be remaking this video. Um, so let's get started. So for me, number one, my first layer of protection when um, talking about water safety and drowning prevention is swimming lessons, um, swimming instruction, knowing how to swim. Um, I teach swimming lessons, um, survival swimming instruction in children as early as six months. So for me, I do six months to 18 years of age. That's kind of my niche. Um, that's where I feel comfortable. Some people do adults. Some people do older children. Um, some people do group lessons, private instruction. The key here is just to have um, a great uh, swimming skill um, so that if your child has to use it to save his or her own life that they can do that um, remember drowning can take as little as 20 seconds so seconds matter so swim lessons are a must number one that part is not going to move number two for me my layers of protection um, these include pool fences, nets, alarms. Um, the more barriers you can have, I feel like the better. But um, I would suggest a fence over a net. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you have is uh, has self-closing latches that will um, latch automatically. Sometimes kids are not great about putting that latch back in, in, in you yourself. Maybe you have your arms full of kids and toys. So everybody needs to have something that is um, can close behind you every single time. Now I will say this is number two for me because um, you may put all these barriers in place, but we you know, as humans, we're mobile. We go on vacation. We go to different areas. So our pool fence will stay, but we will not. So that's why my swim lessons are in number one and pool fences, barriers, and alarms are number two. Now, I also feel that as many layers as possible is a good thing. But personally, I also kind of feel like if you have the more barriers you have, the more the harder it would be for you to get through to your child if they were to fall in. Um, so that's just kind of how I feel. Maybe somebody else feels differently, and that's that's a okay. Let me know in the comments. Um, but if you have, um, you know, the latches for me, our door is really funky. We have two latches on our doors, so we have to double unlock it. And sometimes it can get frustrating if you don't know how to work it. So time is crucial. So barriers are great, but they can also, you know, prevent those um, that time that can extend that time that your child is in the pool alone if you don't know how to properly work those gates or there's some kind of malfunction. So swim lessons first, pool barriers um, second. Um, and, and alarms for your home as well. And that's a good thing to have if you have um, a, a runner um, in your home, front door, back door, you know, it's it's all good. You're preventing an accident from happening. And so alarms can really help you trigger, oh, somebody's outside that they're not supposed to be um, and really can save you time. Number three, no CPR. My 10-year-old knows CPR. Um, my five-and-a-half-year-old wants to know CPR. I think he understands kind of what to do. His main focus is what do you do if someone is in trouble, you call for help. You call, what do you call? You call 911. You ask Alexa. You ask Surrey. You dial it on the phone um, and get those kids involved too. I have four children, 16, 10, 5, and 3. And so they all know the pool rules. Um, my 16-year-old and my 10-year-old know CPR. And everybody knows, um, I 
maybe my three-year-old doesn't, but everyone knows how to call for, for help and, and call 911. So knowing CPR, those are my top three. The rest, four through ten, are kind of interchangeable. Um, I have uh, number four is stay close to your children when you're in the pool. Stay within arm's reach. Um, this is going to, again, seconds matter. So if you notice your child is under but you're right there, that's definitely going to help. Um, and this will also help you to avoid distractions such as your phone and, you know, we, we talk and converse with other people and that's fine. But I think if you're in the water, you're going to be more focused on watching your child and children. Um, so stay close and within arm's reach. Um, oh, check the pool first. If your child goes missing, I have this at number five. If your child goes missing, check the pool first first. Check the pond first. If you have a body of water in or around your house, you always have to check that first. Um, again, seconds matter and seconds is all we have. Um, number six, clear pool toys and distractions from the pool area, patio area. Um, this is going to help um, if your child was playing with toys um, in the pool before, um, just that day, the likelihood of them wanting to go back and reenact that fun moment. Um, if they see that pool or if they see that toy near and in the pool area, it's going to um, make it harder for them to stay away. So uh, we had a great time, but now it's time to come inside. And so you need to make sure all those things are clear um, to to definitely um, not create confusion and um, maybe even bring those toys inside for them to play with. So um, number seven, never enter a pool with a broken, loose, or missing drain cover. Now you're not really going to know this, right? You're not going to go to a public pool and inspect everything and, and know that's their job to keep up with that and those codes, but you can do this for yourself and in your home and in your pool. Um, number eight, appoint a water watcher and switch often. Um, I personally feel like if you, um, and this is also part of number nine, try to bring multiple adults, more eyes watching the better, and then you can take turns appointing a water watcher. Me, I have lanyards, um, say I'm a water watcher, and this is what we do, you know, please don't talk to me, <laughs> kind of thing. And it can be a short 10 minutes before you switch. Um, I think switching as often as you can prevents you from being distracted, wanting to pick up your phone, you know, um, not always keeping eyes on, or maybe you can get in the pool as a water watcher and then switch back and forth. Um, the more adults you have, I think the better because then you have more eyes watching all of your children. And um, for me, I have a lot of children, so I need a lot of people. Um, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, and number six, or, I'm sorry, number 10, wow. Um, go over the pool house rules with your older children. I do this all the time. I do this when we're at the beach, when we're at somebody else's house, when we're at somebody else's pool, my pool. As a survival swimming instructor, it's always on my mind, all the time. And so my children know the routine. They can reverse, ev they can <laughs> reverse. They can recite everything by heart pretty much by now. Um, they roll their eyes, but I make them say it to me anyway. What are the rules? And the oldest and middle and even my five-year-old, they're always looking out for, for the youngest. Everybody's looking out. She can swim. She's an excellent survival swimmer, but we don't want to take those chances, especially when we're not at our at our own pool and in our own home. Um, so rules are very important. And if your child is old enough to know them, it's worth repeating every single time. Um, and lastly, this isn't really a layer of protection, but in my personal opinion, um, don't rely on your lifeguards um, at public pools to watch or save your child. Um, and that's what they're there for. That's what they're paid for. But we, you know, they have a they have a big job. They have a lot of people and. Um, all different ages, anyone can drown. So um, don't rely on them to be your water watcher. That's you, that's your job, and they're human, and we're human, and so not everyone's perfect, and mistakes are made, um, and we see that, uh, I don't wanna say often, but we've, we've seen it um, happen. So um, you don't want to 
rely on anybody to watch your child but you or your water watcher um, scanning the pool at all times. So uh, the pool can be such a fun place, especially if you're like me who live in Florida and it's hot, you know, 10 months out of the year. Um, it's a great place to be, but it's not a place for fun social interaction when you're an adult. It, it really is hard. Um, it's fun for the children, but we always need to be, you know, our guard needs to to never be let down and um, because drowning is the leading cause of death in children under the age of five and the second leading cause of death, accidental death, in children ages five to 15. So we wanna make sure that our children are always protected um, to keep them from being a part of this ever-growing drowning statistic. Um, so please let me know what you think. Um, Put your comments down below if you like this video, didn't like this video, if you have something to add, I'd love to hear it. Um, I am a part of this YouTube channel <laughs> because I want to um, provide education for everybody, not just my community. I go to all my local preschools and daycares and whoever will have me so I can pass out my information and read stories and talk to children about water safety. But I can only do so much and so I really want to branch out and um, give my message to as many people as possible um, to let them know because some people just don't, especially people that um, live in colder climates whose swim seasons are just two months long. Um, they just they don't know the statistics and how real they actually are. So um, I'd love for you to participate and let me know what you think and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.